The Battle of San Pascual, also spelled San Pascual, was a military encounter that occurred during the Mexican-American War in what is now the San Pascual Valley community of the city of San Diego, California. On December 6 and December 7, 1846, General Stephen W. Kearney's U.S. Army Column, Army of the West, along with a small detachment of the California Battalion led by a Marine Lieutenant, engaged a small contingent of Californios and the Presidial Lancers Los Galgos, led by Major Andres Pico. After U.S. reinforcements arrived, Kearney's troops were able to reach San Diego. Background General Kearney had orders to assume command of U.S. forces in California with his but sent back most of his force after meeting up with Kit Carson near Socorro on 6 October, and hearing of the seizure of California by Commodore Robert F. Stockton, Kearney keeping only companies C and K, 1st Dragoons, about 100 men. Kearney's force, guided by Carson, reached Warner's Ranch in California on 2 December, in a greatly weakened condition. They had just completed a 2,000-mile march, the longest march in U.S. Army history. General Kearney's army, most originating from Fort Scott, Captain Abraham Robinson Johnston, Regimental Adjutant, Company K, 12 Mounted Dragoons, Captain Benjamin Davy Moore, Company C, 60 dismounted dragoons, some mounted on mules. Captain Henry Smith Turner, Kearney's Army of the West Adjutant General. Lieutenant William H. Emery, Chief Topographical Engineer, Corps of Topographical Engineers. Lieutenant William H. Warner, Corps of Topographical Engineers, Commanding for Topographical Engineering, Mountainman, Peterson, Londo, Perro, and Private Francois Menard. Lieutenant John W. Davidson, Commanded two howitzers and six dragoons placed at the rear of the advance. Second Lieutenant Thomas C. Hammond, aide-de-camp, Major Swords, Assistant Quartermaster, Rear Guard for Baggage Train, Officers Personal Slaves, and Civilians, U.S. Army Surgeon Dr. John S. Griffin, Enlisted Men, Judge Pierce, Sergeant Williams, Pat Halpin, Sergeant Falls, Sergeant John Cox, Private William B. Dunn, Private David Streeter, Private James Osborne, Dr. Erasmus Darwin French Company C, Corporal William C, West Private George Ashmead, Private Joseph D, Campbell, Private John Dunlop, Private William Dalton, Private William C, Lucky, Private Samuel F, Repol, Private Joseph B, Kennedy, Company K, First Sergeant Otis L. Moore, Sergeant William Witness, Corporal George Ramsdale, Farrier David W. Johnston, Private William G. Golston, Private William H. Feel, Private Robert S. Gregory, Private Hugh McCaffrey. After turning back the Americans trying to recapture Los Angeles in the Battle of Dominguez Rancho, Captain Jose Maria Flores sent about 100 men to San Luis Obispo to confront L.T. Carl John C. Fremont's 300 men moving south from Monterey, and sent another 100 men to watch Stockton's base at San Diego. But Flores kept the bulk of his men at Los Angeles. Captain Archibald Gillespie with 39 men, met Kearney on 5 December, with a message from Stockton requesting Kearney confront Flora's men outside San Diego. The total American force now amounted to 179 men. USMC Acting Captain Gillespie's Mounted Rifle Volunteers, Detachment of the California Battalion, 10 U.S. Navy Sailor Carbiners from Fleet on the Pacific Coast, F Company aboard the US Congress commanded by Acting Lieutenant Edward Fitzgerald B. Allen, past Midshipman James M. Duncan, Sutter Fort's Russian brass four-pounder cannon, it had been hidden after Mexican authorities tried to use the cannon against Californios at the Battle of Cahuenga Pass during the 1831 tax revolt. Charles Weber disclosed its location to Gillespie, 
26 Mounted Rifle Company, commanded by acting Captain Samuel Gibson and longtime Kit Carson and John Fremont Associate, acting Lieutenant Alexander Goddy, including Antoine Robideau, Philip Crosthwaite, Beatitude Petito, William Henry Russell L., Daniel Sexton, Franklin Sears, Thomas Burgess, Jean Mutrel, Private Henry Booker, Rafael Machado, California Guide provided by San Diego. Captains Leonardo Cota and Jose Alapaz took a force to San Pasquale Valley with the intention to interdict and keep in check Captain Gillespie after his departure from San Diego. Later, Major Andres Pico, after a failed search for a detachment of U.S. soldiers, joined forces with the captains and took command. These Californios led a force consisting of landowners, sons of landowners, and vaqueros, many with well-known and respected family names in the community. Don Leonardo Cota, Captain. Enrique Abilia, Captain. Ramon Carrillo, Captain. Jose Maria Cota, Captain. Carlos Dominguez, Captain. Nicolas Hermosillo, Captain. Jose Alapaz, Captain. Ramon O. Suna. General Andres Pico. Don Leandro Osinar, Captain. Juan Bautista Marino, Captain. Thomas A. Sanchez, Captain. Pablo Veja, Captain. Manuel Veja. Prelude. A Dragoon Patrol under Lieutenant Thomas C. Hammond, guided by Rafael Machado, the son of Don Jose Manuel Machado, reconnoitred Captain Andres Pico's force along the road at San Pascual. While Machado sneaked into the camp, Lt. Hammond became suspicious he was being set up for an ambush and rode the Dragoons into the camp, where they spoke with an Indian they found sleeping in a hut. In a coincidence that has never been fully explained, a guard under the command of Machado's concunado, the brother of a brother-in-law and future father-in-law, Captain José Alapaz, challenged the dragoons and alerted the camp to their presence. While Machado quickly ran back to Hammond's scouting party, Alapaz sounded the alarm but was dismissed by General Pico until a U.S. Army blanket and dragoon coat were discovered on the edge of camp by Pablo Vallar, with Captain Alapaz, Captain Leonardo Cota and Jose Maria Ibarra chased the dragoons to the top of the next ridge with the battle cry of Viva California. Pico was alerted, and the California camp prepared for the U.S. Army dragoons and Marines to attack. Kearney had planned a surprise attack at daylight. Despite the damp weather wetting down the powder and the extremely poor state of the soldiers' equipment and mounts, mostly mules, as the horses had died on the preceding march, battle, having lost the element of surprise, at midnight Kearney ordered an immediate advance. It had rained that night. Men, muskets, pistols and equipment were wet and cold, but the troops, after over six months without any action, were eager to engage the Californios. Early in the morning of December 6, 1846, the column proceeded by twos across the ridge between Santa Maria and San Pasquale. During the descent, while it was still dark and with a low-lying fog, Kearney's force became strung out and were caught in a disadvantageous position by General Pico's swift advance. Captain Abraham R. Johnston's advance guard, while still three quarters of a mile from Pico's forces, was ordered by Kearney to trot, which Johnston misunderstood as gallop. Forty of the best mounted pulled far ahead of the main body of the force. The mules pulling the howitzers bolted, taking one of the guns with them. Pico's mounted force remained ahead of the pursuing U.S. forces. Their fresh horses and superior horsemanship allowed them to outmaneuver and lead the advance group of dragoons away from the main force. The Californios had a distinct advantage over the U.S. soldiers in their knowledge of the terrain. A second separation developed until 28 dragoons, including Kearney, were separated. Damp powder reduced the effectiveness of carbines to clubs and pistols to hammers, as described by a native woman that witnessed the battle.
The Californios were armed with long lances and reatus, which they used with great effect. As a consequence, Johnston's charge was unsupported and his dragoons were forced to withdraw. As the leading element of the U.S. forces attacked through close to a Kumeyari village, the Californios wheeled back and fired their few firearms. At this time, Captain Johnston was killed by a bullet. Pico then withdrew a half mile to higher ground. A second charge ordered by Captain Benjamin D. Moore further separated the Americans, and the Californios met to his dragoons with a countercharge by lances. The charge was quickly surrounded, and Captain Moore was killed. Gillespie arrived within 15 minutes with the artillery. Mules are reluctant to wheel, and the horse-mounted Californios outflanked the Americans and captured one of the unattended howitzers. Gillespie's men unlimbered the remaining howitzer, John Sutter's Russian-made bronze four-pounder. Gillespie used a saber to fight off a vicious personal attack made by a group of lances in revenge for his previous actions during his occupation of Los Angeles and the broken agreement to cease hostilities. He took a lance thrust just over the heart that pierced a lung. Either this action or the unusual degree of bloodshed prompted Pico to withdraw. Aftermath The next day, December 7, 1846, after assurances by Dr. Griffin that the worst of the injured could be moved, Captain Turner marched the column towards San Diego. California lances established a blocking position near what is now known as Mule Hill. Captain Turner ordered Lieutenant William H. Emery and a squad of dragoons to engage and drive off the menacing lances. With dry powder in their carbines, the dragoons easily forced the lances away, while inflicting five dead among the fleeing Californios. That evening Kearney regained his command, established a strong defensive perimeter and then sent dispatches requesting urgent reinforcements. Carried to Commodore Stockton by Lieutenant Edward Beale, Kit Carson and a young Indian guide. Under cover of darkness they each took different routes to the Commodore's headquarters at San Diego, 28 miles to the south-southwest. Stockton quickly dispatched a unit of over 200 sailors and marines, whose arrival caused the Californios to disperse. Kearney had already determined the night before to continue the march the next morning. Stockton's unit then escorted Kearney's battered troops to San Diego, where they arrived December 12. Dr. John S. Griffin, Kearney's surgeon, reported that the Americans had lost 17 killed and 18 wounded out of the 50 officers and men who engaged Pico's lances. They buried the dead in a mass grave on the battlefield. When they arrived in San Diego, the wounded survivors were treated by their California guide sister, Nurse Juanita Machado Alapasta Wrightington, known as the Florence Nightingale of San Diego for her charity work for the oppressed native peoples camped outside San Diego. General Kearney's official report states, on the morning of the 7th, having made ambulances for our wounded, we proceeded on our march when the enemy showed himself, occupying the hills in our front, which they left as we approached. Till reaching San Bernardo a party of them took possession of a hill near to it and maintained their position until attacked by our advance, who quickly drove them from it killing and wounding five of their number with no loss on our part. General Kearney was promoted for his valiant actions at San Pasqual. Sometime after the battle, General Kearney wrote that the U.S. had achieved victory since the Californios had fled the field, but the Californios saw the engagement as their victory. In retrospect, given the state of the Mexican Republic at that time it is not clear if the Californios had ever intended to engage Kearney in the first place. The battle is unique, as it was one of the few military battles in the United States that involved elements of the Army, Navy, Marines, and civilian volunteers, all in the same skirmish. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, historians debated which force won or lost the battle. Clearly, Kearney retained the battle area, the ability to operate and maneuver, and also the initiative, though his losses were significantly higher.
He did not implement his battle plan, his ammunition was compromised, and he outrang his artillery and supply line. The victory of the battle is still debated. Certainly, these early experiences tempered Kearney's imposition of martial law on the California population and established a mutual degree of respect between the population and the new government administrators. Legacy Fort Moore was constructed on North Hill Street, originally as an improvised defensive position used by L.T. Gillespie, and later was modified into a fort, after the popular revolt in Los Angeles was subdued. Captains Leonardo Cota and Jose Alapaz were honored by U.S. Marines with a plaque at Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton. It states, under this tree Leonardo Cota and Jose Alapaz planned the Battle of San Pasqual in 1846. Kearney Mesa, an area of San Diego, was later named after the U.S. General. Kit Carson Park on the south side of Escondido was named in his honor. Beale Air Force Base in Marysville, California was named after Edward Beale. Camp Gillespie, completed in 1942 during World War II, was named in honor of Lieutenant Archibald Gillespie. In 1944 the federal government transferred the property to the county of San Diego. It rechristened the facility as Gillespie Field, since used as a municipal airport. Captain Benjamin D. Moore, who was killed from battle wounds, was honored by the dedication and naming of Fort Moore in downtown Los Angeles, California. The Fort Moore Hill Pioneer Memorial further honors Moore and other American pioneers. The site of the battle is commemorated as San Pasqual Battlefield State Historic Park, a site on the National Register of Historic Places.